Chill, Matt G, The Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko. Henda, what do you mean? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, today is a throwback of notes. Varvas J. Oh no, look, guys. Hey, hey, when this nigga was making the whole country shake. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I went up my... <laughs> I was meant to say this one, man. What is this about you? Today I'm chilling with the fucking legend, Ishmiza. Ishmael, I don't know what you call yourself, because you've been around, like, you know, before I was born, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm still, I still go by the name of Ishmiza, mm. a.k.a. Uh, okay, Ishmael, a.k.a. Ishmiza, you know what I mean? Yeah. Ishmichojo, whatever you want to call it, you know, as long as you're calling me. Uh, my go- my girlfriend's from the northwest. Uh, where were you? Where were you brought up in the northwest? No, I mean, I'm I'm uh, I was actually born in um, I was, was around Delareville, but then immediately there we moved to a place called Litabo. That's where I was raised, probably mm. you know primary school, secondary school. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I'm Litabo. That's that's the. Do you know? Do you know you've been around for so long, ne? Mm. And the first time I met you was literally about three, four weeks ago mm. at Recharge Lounge in Midrand. Hey, that place, <laughs> my boy. That's my place. I need to go back there again. And, and this nigga was dancing. He was having fun. I'm like, hey, let me ah, not disturb him, you dude. know, because I wanted to get an interview. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Shmiza doesn't know me. I let me not. Let me just, you know, no, keep my lane. Dude, I was having fun. Trust yeah. me, I was having fun. I was out there. Just having fun. That place was beautiful. I was also, I was performing there also. Oh, is it? Yeah. What gig was it? Was it Bob's gig? Or? Yeah, it was. Uh, no, it was uh, dance. Actually, is the is the guy that booked. Oh, me. dance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yes. yeah, so I came through there mm. and did my performance. But then I ended up staying until it closed. I can't believe it. I was there. I was like, you know, those people were like, okay, Cecilia Vala Manch. <laughs> I was there with some chicks and shit, but it was fun. <laughs> but then the funny thing about it is. I left a uh, mid rent. Yeah. Like the, the 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 performance was on a Sunday evening. Yeah, yeah. I left mid rent Monday evening. Yeah, because <laughs> I had some people here. Yeah, I used to, ah, it was going down. I had so much fun. Hey, my dog, please give me a charger before we run out of battery. Yeah. Please you give know? me a charger. Yeah, the white one for the laptop. Yeah. But dude, I heard that you were uh, uh, homeless at some point. Yeah. No. Yeah. Definitely. When I came, when I first came to Joburg, you know what I mean. I. Okay, this is what happened. Mm. I used to, have, I, I used to actually he's still my friend. I don't know why I say I used to. Uh, my friend Lucky, ne? Mm. Lucky, we were. He was my friend. Like we were very close in in Letabo. Back, yeah. You know, we were going to the same school. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, but he had uh, relatives. He had no. He, he had his family. Go, go, guy, go. Go Rabbi Reach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So every time he comes to Jobek, sometimes I'll tag along with him. But then tag along, tag along one time, two times, three times, and then I ended up staying, mm. you know, in Hilbro, because Hilbro was buzzing back then. It was the, I the, heard Hilbro was like Santin. It was the place to be, trust me. Yeah. It was like, it was the place to mm. be, you know. So I ended up staying at some point because I was pushing this music thing, you know. Mm. I was pushing, definitely pushing it. It was, it was my place. I was like, okay. Ranu, I stay now. I'm, 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 not, I'm not going back to, to Rusty Dusty. Not that I'm not going back, but I'm not going back now. Yeah. This is what I've been looking for. I've been checking out people on TV who I was admire. Yeah, there was no Instagram then, James. Ah, I wanna Insta. Insta what? <laughs> you know, there was nothing back then. So, but there was music, man. Music was everywhere. Every club you'd go to, there's an open mic. There's a there's a band, my boy. There's just fun in it. Back then, the, the club in the was like... That's when doors open. Six o'clock will sing, seven o'clock will sing. That's the only time. Also, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And which, but for me, it was like... It was heaven for me because it was like... Uh, it was a place where I could stay there the whole night because I had nowhere to go mm, at mm. some point. You know what I mean? Mm. I had nowhere to go. Let me be comfortable with you as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when, obviously, I linked up with Abandaba Fan and Abu Junior Trade from Boom Shaka mm. because it, we were a clique back then and then Abu Lebu, you know, Orla, what Orla Lebu, yes, you know what I mean? And Abu Tembi, Abu Theo, and then we reason also, not the reason, the rapid reason, the, the Tiba Tiba reason. Mm. And yeah, we were just hitting the streets there, you know, making a plan and 
sleeping by a friend. I never wanted you to be uh, part of It was. It, it, I, I was almost part of of Ibumshaka. I was almost part of Ibumshaka. But the, the thing when it happened, the scheme was already happening, and that's when the the Vava J thing it came out. You know, mm. so. That's 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 how come I never because I remember I went to Botswana with them with the Boomshaka people and we were performing on stage to there together with them you know, but then just before that when we came back to Joburg I think that's when I was discovered I was uh, I met up uh, Ramon and who took me to meet Ulans yeah you know from Motherland so that L- was back I was around back then those days oh uh, yeah I guess you remember P- POC was happening Pat. Oh, she, yes. there was POC back in the day, you know. So yeah. Lance was still was was there because he he's, Lance is one of the one of the uh, Godfather. Yeah, Godfather of the independent. Also, because you remember in the, those days, the people were coming from the record companies and doing their thing. You know, that's when you have people like Abu Skido, you know, branching out and doing their own thing. Yeah. You know, obviously. Yeah, lift the mic up so people can hear you. Yeah, you have yeah, Abu Skido, you know, branching out and doing their thing. And then you have Abu, Abu Lance, and then you have Abu Arthur, you know, coming out with their own. That's That that was the era where people... Shit, what you were saying means the industry was born in Hilbert because Oskido was selling hot dogs. The industry was born in Hilbro. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> the, indes- the independent industry... That you see today was actually born in here, bro. You know, that's how powerful Hebo is. That's why niggas were not scared to be homeless out there because they know what we, we they, they were uh, right, chasing after was in here, bro. There was such a vibe, like you couldn't believe it was. It was too much. It was so. Sp- I don't know. But then, when did you meet? Uh, is, what's that rap group? Prodigy. Uh, uh, Prophet of the City. Prophets of the City. Yeah, sorry, Pro- yeah, Prophet of the City. I met them in Hill, bro. I met one man. Let me tell you the story about Prophet. Uh, how I met Prophet of the City. Yeah. Me and Junior Dread were performing, because cool, we were kind of like a team. He would he would do his ragas and I do the singing, and we would dance as well, you know, in clubs and blah blah blah. And then, but then at one. You were a no, that 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 was like during break dance. <laughs> Break this, pop it. Break it down. I was ah, I was popping and locking, popping and locking, poppy popping and locking. No, I was, I was, yeah, no, I was a popper and locker. But my main thing was singing, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, uh, yeah, there was a competition in the club called uh, I, f- I forget the name in Hillbro, a rap competition, mm. and we entered obviously. But the rap always went with dancing back then, and Oskido was also there. As a we were competing, it was Oskido, me, Boomshak. I mean, me and Junior Dread from Boomshak, and some other people that I can't remember. But then, you know, uh, think Oskido won that. Oskido won the, the the best rap rapper. Oskido was a rapper. Yeah, Oskido was a rapper. You, you guys, you, Oskido <laughs> was a rapper. Oskido and Oskido also could pop pop and lock. What? Yeah, pop lock break dance. Yeah. You know what I mean? At this club, but then that's when I met. Uh, Let me just drink there. But then uh, later on, though, later on, probably like a few weeks, couple of weeks after that, mm. there was a club called uh, Pink Cadillac. Mm. Pink Cadillac was a club where you would say, like, sort of like a colored club, mm. like a color club in Hillbrook. It was banging. Yo, yo, it was the, the place to be, also. That's when I met I met Du Ramon from uh, oh and Ramon also was was that this club we, we were uh, competing at the way there was Oskido and everybody yeah he saw us there me and Junior doing our thing and then it happened that Prophet of the City was looking for Ama uh, to replace the two dancers they had some dancers twins that they were no longer with and then they were like okay we're looking for two dancers can you guys join us mm, mm. that's pretty much when everything started happening for. For us, we were introduced to studios, tours, and stuff. And then um, I met Ramon, who introduced me to Lance, and then yeah. And you guys won the first best rap album at the summers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah we definitely did. Because Kiki because, and Kesba, yeah, out here fighting. You were the first to do it, my nigga. I know we fought. <laughs> hey, no, no, we definitely did our thing. You know, we op- we opened doors for it. I mean, it, which is uh, it's a beautiful thing to ever to to think of. But for me. Obviously, I, I have to think. I joined Prophet of the City, but Prophet of the City was already existing when I joined them. You know what I mean? So I'd say Prophet of the City opened doors for me. 
and you know open doors. Why, why, why did you leave? Why did you leave the group? I didn't leave the group. Actually, the funniest thing is, Prophet City never broke up. You know, it's just in J life where you know people start. You know, they grow up and people they get married and some people you, you some friends with them. Some people, yeah, some people out there. Reggie D is out there. At, uh, oh, Reggie D was. Of yeah, no, Reddy D was the leader of Prophet of the City. He was the main guy, mm. you know, so still is. And um, Shaheen also, but Shaheen went to Canada. He now lives in Canada. He he teaches at the university, you know what I mean? So, so fuck this essay shit. Yeah, hey, dude, not fuck the essay shit. I wouldn't say he says fuck, but I, I would say, yeah, it's just life, life happened like that, you know? And then when do you meet? Steve? Because music was not music was not paying at all back then. Seriously. Especially no no music was paying, but if you're doing rap, then dude, it was trust me, it was purely love because there was no money coming in For a into your pocket. You dude, you don't even count those things back then as a South African rapper. Imagine people were like, "Oh, Lama American," you know what I mean, like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, about your man, your man. <laughs> that was screw screw. No, you, I, I see the screw screws are crying now, but they don't know. <laughs> Back then, it was like, oh, yo, man. Oh, yo, yo. You know what I mean? And there was no really money. It was purely love. And, you know, it's it, it was crazy, but it was just pure love of the art and of the music. And that, that's pretty much back then when even radio wasn't really playing hip hop. There wasn't Wi Fi yet, man. Nah. There was no Wi Fi, there was, there was no urban kind of mm, station that represented, you know what I mean? You mm. still have your, you had your stations, obviously, but most of them were really, because back then stations were, in a way, they were owned, in a way, you could say they were owned by your Gallows, mm. your Gallo, which is an in, international radio uh, record company. Yeah, Universal. The, yes, Universal, which mm. were, you know, just like, Little subs of mm. you know, so they were pushing. They were put. They were put. Their main concern was to push up Madonna and Michael Jackson and them and blah blah blah. You know what I mean? From the U.S., but there was no local. Local was there, obviously. I mean, you have people like Chico and Aboban, but I'm talking about like street, like street, like Kwaito or hip hop. No, that was not true. So when do you meet Skim Sam? Oh, uh, the, the guys I met them, Yovel. That's that's like that's like we're moving from Yovo now we're going to Yovo because you know Yovo was also another place where a lot of things got started and and, and you're getting closer and to the north now. The vibe was whoo, you know the vibe was just too much. The club vibe, the the the, the nightlife, the 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 trend life, everything, music. You know, I would say. Everything, most of the artists that's in Kwaito that started, they actually had something to do a Yova. Mm. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from people, but it's so way to, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. that's, those are, the, those are the forefathers, you know, the people that actually so way to is very responsible for a lot of Kwaito, you know? But then it started spilling to, you know, to towns when people were like, okay, because you must remember, Pella, it was like, when people got freedom, Mandela, blah, 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 you understand? So people were going out to, to towns to celebrate, mm. you know, with their life, with their lifestyle. Yeah, music. Yeah, and then Kwaito was a perfect tool for people to be like, okay, now we got freedom, Mandela is out. Uh, people were out there, you know, expressing myself. It was the new freedom. It was, yeah. Who do you think started Kwaito? You know what? I would say, me, honestly, I think... Kwaito comes from the house before ah. house music because it's just like taking house and, and screwing it mm. and m- making it slower. Like like my piano right now. It's making it slower. Yeah, like like yeah, because my piano actually is Kwaito. It's, it's new school Kwaito. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It's, so the BPM is just slower. Yeah, you understand. So it's um, I mean everything is always from something. Mm. Yeah. So I think yeah. yeah you, Quite need to quite to needs to give it up to house music. All right, so listen, um, you've got so many hits, man. Yeah. And what I want to do right now is just go through some of the hits, and I want you to tell me like what was going on at the time. Yeah. Let's start with Varvasje. Varvasje. How did that come about? Varvasje was a track that. Oh no, Lika. Oh no, Lika. That 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 is a product of Yovo. 
that's a product of Yovo because we used to we used to live in a flat, Limati Bos, Rasta Teba, uh, Lucky and Orla Jacob. You know, we were friends. But then but then I used to just I was in POC, right? We used to go a lot overseas, like a lot. So every time I could, like when I leave my flat, my friends will be there. But when I come back, we'd be DJing around Yovo, we were DJs, we were you know, at Tandos and places like that. So as us as friends, we did it. We came, we came up with the concept in the flat while we were just drinking and having fun. Mm. You know what I mean? <clears throat> playing, I think we were playing somebody else's beat. I don't remember who. Uh, but then we came, we started coming up with the Vavasji, you know what I mean? And building it up and building it up. And then the, the next did, thing. Did you come up with the hook? Vavasji. I'm the hook man. <laughs> I'm the hook man. I'm the hook man. No, you know, yeah, because everything starts from the hook man. Yeah, yeah, I came up with Vavas J, and then, and the other guys who started feeling, well, no, look, I, eh, when this and this was happening, no, look, I, when this and this, you know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, so it was it was that kind of vibe. I think somebody should make a new Vavas J in terms of, like, for, I guess for the 2000, you know what I mean? Yeah. It will it'll be proper, yeah. with maybe my piano vibe. Okay, let me stop giving people ideas. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, but that would be nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, my mm. people, that was a big one because I think you want a summer. For yeah, me. my people, I want a summer and I want a what you call it a me- me- a metro okay. a metro award. Okay. Yeah, no, no, that one was was, but then it was an R and B. Also, R and B wasn't that big in SA, but I was doing R and B because uh, for the for the pure love of it, you know. Yeah, but yo, yeah, it was crazy when I went to receive that award in Vanagit. I'm there. I'm like, this is my moment, in Vana. Yo, R and B is winning an award. I'm like, it's my night. I remember it was even at Monte Cassino at that time. How old are you? How old are you at the time? Damn, I don't remember. It was how old? Probably, I don't know, maybe twenty five, maybe, wow. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, around that time. Yeah, but I'm in my almost kind of early twenties or something like that. Mm. But um, yo, while I'm receiving, when I'm about to tell people. How I wanna think, I wanna th- ah, Brenda Fassi jumps on stage, my boy. <laughs> jumps on the podium, my boy. She started. Pull the catch the- away. Mm, Fana, she took the, uh, the 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 attention so away from me. Actually, that's why a lot of people don't remember how I won that thing. Yeah. Nobody remembers that I won a summer. Yeah. Cause Brenda Fassi came and took it away, and started doing that thing. I was like, wow, I was so mad that day. I was so mad. What at was she me. doing? She just came there. She was lit. She just started talking about her own things. <laughs> Mfanagiti, that was the craziest moment of my life. It was not even like that Kanye, at least that, that Kanye there. Did that girl even say anything? No. <laughs> Probably it was mine. Yeah, I couldn't, I, all I, I just came in and took the thing. I didn't say anything. Yo. But musically, because mm. I know you love. But uh, but uh, you know we love Brenda. Of yeah, course, I was yeah. about to say. Like, yeah. w- uh, did you get any inspiration from her? That definitely. I mean, because Brenda was people like Brenda was people like about Chico Twala and there were people like about Sis Nomuntu Kapa. You know, they were the, they were the big sisters about Yvonne. They were the big sisters before us who actually, you know what I mean? They also motivated us alongside you know brothers like about Kamazu. You know, I was senior and stuff like that. So, you know, of course, I have nothing but respect. And Did she ever come to you and say, I fucks with your shit, man? Who was that? Uh, Brenda first. Ah, no, no, Brenda. Brenda was... Brenda came to my place and cooked. You lie! Spencer. Brenda came to... I knew Bongani before Josie. Yeah. Bongani used to skate. I remember I used to live in Sunning Hill. Bongani used to skate to my place. You know what I mean? Bongani used to skate to my place. I remember even I recorded Brenda at my studio, but it was way early when, you know, when you're starting to program music, but you mm, are, mm, mm. you are whack, but there is something there. You don't know what, what it just sounds, but Brenda did a, a bit of recording. She came, she cooked, you know what I mean? So what she, did she cook? I know she, you know, she represented the, the normal pop and whatnot, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no. Wow, this nigga, you had Brenda Fancy cook fuck for Yeah, me. you must ask Bong. So Brenda was Brenda was uh, my big sister. And I know even like the, the other sister, 
Caprenda uh, and yeah. Mm. yeah. And then did any music come out of that? It like it did, but no, nothing came out out in the public because mm. you know it was. I think it's a good thing because those beats were not happening. <laughs> No, the, my beats were not happening. The mic technique recording was not on. We were just having fun. Just like this podcast. <laughs> no, no, the, no, this podcast is dope. The mic is there. Dope. I, I'm talking about like, you know, when you start, yo, dude, it's your first computer you're learning, you are struggling and around. You never did IT before. Yeah, so, you know, so, yeah, but... Yeah, it's beautiful. And but I mean, Brenda was also there during the the Yovels and stuff like that. So, a big sister, she's out there. Yo, Ishmael, ah, well, I found you out. Bye, my nightly. And then the next day, she comes and wants it back. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then, did you ever tell Bongani about the story? Like, does he know, or you knew him before? No, no, no. Bongs knows. Yeah. No, definitely Bongs knows because Bongs was kind of he was there, kind of. He was there also. And he was like, young. The yeah, yeah, so he, he remembers most of the stuff. So. All right, cool. Let's move to <clears throat> Avulegile Masango. Avulegile Masango. Hi, hi, hi. Azuri. Hi, hi, hi. Ekazi. Hey. Oh, oh yo. Oh. I know that, 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 that track was also how it got recorded. That track was the craziest one because... Back then I was doing yeah R and B young don. Yeah. So you just want the summer and the Yeah, so I'm an R and B guy. I'm supposed to be the cool guy, the ladies guy and stuff like that. Mm. So and then how it happened, it was and then Lance comes to me and was like, yo, uh Yizu Yizu, it's got a soundtrack. Uh, it needs a soundtrack. Mm. Uh, it has to be gospelish. Yo, that track I didn't want to do it so bad. Not that I hate gospel music, but, but I didn't see myself as a gospel guy back then. Yeah, yeah. you know the image, the R and B, hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? So, mm. and then we we ended up doing it, and Avuriki uh, Masango became actually the biggest track that I've ever done. You know that that I didn't want to do. Yeah, yeah. And because boundaries. Yeah, and because yo hectic yo gee whiz, that track. I remember one time we were in the States with POC, we were performing somewhere. And then while during the whole before thing, and they played that really my song in Chicago, boy. I was like, what? In the States? Oh, I was like, Coachella, my dog. Oh, dude. No, no, it was not even in the yeah, Coachella. No, but yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they playing that. I'm like, what? Ouch, yeah. I'm like, yeah. But no, Avulele my song was the. The track that changed my you life. Do you still remember when uh, you went to the studio and how that hook came about? I don't remember. No, no, Avu Legile Masango was obviously like a, a traditional gospel track. I just I just redid it in, and then we we, we popped it, popified it. Mm. You know, we made it pop, you know, back then. And then, yeah. And then people, the people, and the people accepted it. It was like weird because I was not a gospel singer, but then uh, people accepted it from your church goer to a your non church goer to the club. It was actually one one of the first tracks and the reason why I say one of the first tracks, I don't I've never had a track, a gospel track being played in a club mm. before mm. Avule Gilema Sang. So mm. it crossed it crossed boundaries like like crazy. Because now you have Andy Kokele by Jub Jub. All those things. But Avule Gilema Sang was started that trend, that vibe, you know what I mean? So it was it was crazy. It was it was like yeah, big. And then obviously, <clears throat> then I went to Triple uh, Nine, and then uh, we re we redid it again. Mm. You know, the, actually uh, we should do another one again. Because <laughs> <laughs> if it worked before, it can work again. <laughs> and then okay, now we go to like now I'm born now. I'm born. I'm mm. starting to walk now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? You're <laughs> not a sperm anymore. Robalitega. <laughs> Robalitega. Mm. Yes, Robalitega actually, it's funny because it happened. Just move your mic here. Oh, Robalitega. Oh. Yeah. Robalitega happened. Uh, happened, yeah, after, actually, after I really gave my song, years or years from then, I went to. Um, I met Speedy Speedy who introduced me to Arthur Mapukati. I think it is tell as well. But we 
No, uh, no. Yes. No, speed, I mean, Gonzalez Speedy had his own swag, you know what I'm saying? And it, it was cool. You know, it worked for him, you know? Yeah. It was it was his gimmick, and I think that's when people misunderstand Speedy because mm. it was, you know, every artist then, you know, people have gimmicks. Some people go, okay, you see this an artist that wear, wears a cap all the time. Mm. You mm. understand? Or blah, 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 you know? So he's supposed to think. But anyway, we were friends with Speedy, obviously, mm. uh, during the... The scheme times in Yobo. He used to hang out from school. He used to come around and hang out with us, you know. And he he introduced me to to Athama Fukate, and then we did uh, 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 Robali Tech, you know, Robali Tech. Robali Tech also was another groundbreaking vibe because I have never, I haven't done. Then I haven't done a quite a track, Robert, mm. like a proper quite a track. Before that. I've done, you know, because I had tracks like Abu Iskatsa Corner, blah blah blah, and stuff, but nothing like Robert Teka because, yeah, that was crazy. And it was the quickest track I've ever recorded because yeah. they, that beat was just in G. No, it, no, no, it hit, it hit me so hard where it was like, yo, it was everything was just flowing because, you know, the beat was just like telling me, okay, do this, do this, do that. But it was a, be- it, it was a beautiful moment. And, I remember uh, I used to date, I was dating a girl called Uspogazi back then. Mm. You know, uh, I remember I remember that her because of that track. Like, wow. Uspogazi was in the studio. We were actually like, I remember Miss Peter Mapia, we were going out or something, and I was like, I sent the studio, you know. And then we get the techno peas there doing the beats and play me that track. I was like, yo, I need super. <laughs> Let's do this in Taizen, you know. And then we did it. It was beautiful. Shit. And would you and you still think Avulele Masango was bigger than Robalitek? No, definitely. Avulele Masango is the biggest because Avulele Masango, if you think of it, happened twice. It it happened at Motherland with Yizo Yizo, mm. and then again it was released again, got triple nine again. So it Avulele Masango was big. What happened with that? Because you started at Motherland, then you went to triple nine. Then you came back. And then I came back. Mm. Yes, no, no. It was a uh, <clears throat> in the beginning. It was just in J like things of. Um, you know, you're in a record company and then you feel sometimes like, okay, uh, you could you you can probably grow a bit, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And with the lack of understanding of of the, the industry as well, you know, you get too many people in your ear talking this and that and like, oh, Ishma, you can do better. Blah, blah, blah. Because also you also understand you now as a human being. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're still growing. So, of course, then you mistake there, mistake there, but you, you know, but then... then you realize, okay, made a mistake, and then you kind of like, okay. So, what was the mistake going to triple nine? No, I'm not saying, yeah, I, I, I mean, it was like, um, no, it was not a mistake. Mm. Mistake, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> no, it was not a mistake. It was a, it was, I'm saying the mistake was leaving the motherland ah. at that time because of whatever reasons stupid reasons that i can't even remember right now mm. you know what i'm saying but it's funny like you made a you make a mistake you th- you make a mistake there and then you go somewhere and things works out and then you realize okay sharp i'm not happy here anymore again and then you go back or you go you understand it, it's so it it's, is. Like it's like work it's like working go go, go check us and then you're like, I'm not happy to check us. Oh, but you pick and pay. You mm. work, and then you go back. It's just mm. work. That's it. Yeah. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko.